let us discuss how to form schemas from the ear diagram this topic is very very important and we know that when we will be forming schemas and later we can form the tables against each and every schema so forming schema means you are also in a process to form your tables for your database so how to read one ear diagram and how to get the respective schemas and obviously the tables from the uh, to form the database so this topic is very important so here we are having multiple case studies let me go through them one by one the first one let us suppose there is one entity e having e having a1 as the prime attribute a2 is a non prime attribute and a3 is a multi valued attribute then from this particular entity the schemas will be formed in this way we shall form e1 with a1 as a prime attribute and a2 as a non prime attributes so in this way it, if it is having other non prime attributes all of them will be coming to e1 and a3 will get separated and it will be forming like this another entity that is e2 and that will be your a1 a3 that will be your a1 a3 and here this a1 will be the partial key and this entity will be the weak entity set so in this way this particular ear diagram will be broken into these two schemas so one case study we have completed we are going for the next one let us suppose we are having book issue and student book is having two attributes one prime issue, student is having two attributes one prime i want to make one point clear to you that for all this e1 and e2 we are maintaining the same attributes that means all of them are having a1 prime attribute a2 non prime attribute for all e2s we are having a3 prime attribute and a4 non prime attribute so due to lack of space i didn't draw okay now for the first uh, case here you see here book issue and student so it indicates that it is many it is one that means multiple books can be borrowed by a single student at the same time but a book will have a single owner that means a book can be borrowed to a single student at a time so that's why it is many and it is one in this way it is taking place okay there is no existence dependency means what means you can find multiple books which are not issued yet so that book id will not be coming in the issue table and you might be finding some students who haven't taken a single book from the library so that means some roll numbers will not be appearing in the issue table so that means we are having no existence dependency some roll numbers are not here and some book ids are not here in the issue relationship then in the case we will be forming this is my e1 e2 cardinal is n is to 1 as according to this one so we will be having e1 with a1 a2 a1 prime attribute e2 with a3 a4 a3 prime attribute and that will be another schema against r with a1 a3 both as both are as prime attributes so that is my first case we are going for the next one here also i told you that a1 a2 is there and a3 a4 they are there okay now see here we are having student here we are having registration here we are having course a student cannot be a student to one university if he has not got registered to one of the courses so that means all students roll number must have existence in the registration relationship so this registration is having say we are having course id course name here we are having roll number and student name so here all the roll numbers must be appearing in the registration table because a student cannot be a student to one university until and unless he or she has taken admission in some of the courses a course there is many there is one so a course can have multiple student registered but a student at a time can take registration to one course only so that's why it is many to one and here we are having existence dependency so when you are having existence dependency then what will be done here we are having student roll number student name might be other personal details of the student and this course id will be coming in this particular entity so that's why i have shown here total participation that means e and r will be merged because this one, only one course id will be coming against each and every student and each and every student must get registered 
to one course only at most so that is the case so what will happen here we are having n is to 1 and here we will be having 1 union e1 union r and e2 so what will happen this e1 union r so that's why it is my total participation and this may to say what will happen we will be having this e1 with our a1 a2 a3 where any a1 is the prime attribute and e2 where we will be having a3 a4 where a3 is the prime attribute and here this a3 is a non prime attribute prime attribute in one schema and if it is a non prime attribute in another schema then in the second schema where it is non prime there it will be called as a foreign key so in this way the foreign key will take the birth always remember in case of many to one when our existence dependency is existing so many is powerful so many will absorb relationship for the sake of your simplicity to understand this one to remember this one during your exams many is powerful so many will absorb the relationship remember this one next one this is so here we are having no arrows are there that means it is many to many because whenever there is some arrow there we are having one but there is no arrow so they are many to many that means a customer can have multiple loans at the same time a loan can have also multiple customers that means group loans are allowed a person can enjoy personal loan group loans at the same time so that's why it is many to many so here if you ask me to merge say e1r then what will happen from here i'm getting a3 a3 is here so a3 will come here and a3 will become a multi-valued attribute so again i shall have to split with this customer id and the loan id and that is nothing but the relationship itself so here also if you merge if you merge them i'm not asking you to merge i'm just asking you to consider if you merge them then this customer id will become the multi-valued attribute here because against one loan id we are having multiple customer ids because this bank is allowing group loans so that's why what will happen we will be having three schemas against e1 against r and against e2 irrespective of the fact whether existence dependence is existing or not so here we'll be having this one so e1 e2 and r it will be coming like this and it is many to many let us go for the next one here we are having one is to one that means a student can take only a single book and a book can be borrowed by a single student at a time so that is one is to one but i cannot ensure that all students will be taking book from the library so this student roll number is not having any existence dependency in the relationship issue i cannot also assure you that all books will always remain borrowed by the students so some book ids might be absent in the issue so you cannot ensure the existence dependency of this book id in the issue relationship so there is no existence dependency and the cardinality ratio is one is to one in that case we'll be going for separate e1 e2 and r e1 e2 and r separately as i have shown the last one last one is very peculiar just see we are having driver we are having driving license so here we will be having driving license uh, number uh, date of issue place of issue time of issue and other details and here we are having this driver id driver's name personal detailing and so on and you know that a driver can only be a driver if he is having a driving license and obviously a driver can have say one driving license only i'm not considering two wheeler four wheeler or something heavy vehicle or something let us suppose a driver should be a, a driver will be a driver if he is having a driving license and as it is one is to one so i'm considering that a driver will have a single driving license okay now here we are having the existence dependency and the cardinality ratio is one is to one now see a driver should have a name a driver should have a uh, address a driver should have some say say your uh, age of the driver that is true and also it is true a driver should have some license id a driver should should have the license type a driver should have the date of issue of the license and so on then why should i go for these three tables so what will happen we'll be going for e1 union r union e2 so all the attributes will get clubbed under one schema so a1 
A2, A3, A4. And we know that driver IDs are unique for all drivers and also the driving license ID or driving license number will be unique for all driving licenses. So, we can consider this one as prime attribute, we can consider this one as prime attribute, you can in the design implementation if you require you can make both of them as a composite attribute, comp composite key. So, in this way you can implement it according to your implementation choices. So, so we are having this case studies are there. So, here I have done the listing that what should be done and this is a basic one when the multiple root attribute will be coming that will get splitted with the prime attribute. I think you are getting this logic in the next video we are going to discuss one case study on the banking system and there this concept will be used and whenever uh, one year diagram will be given to you, you must be in a position to read it and get the meaning and extract the required schemas and the respective tables to be formed that planning should be concrete and logical to you. Thanks for watching this video.